Hi, you're listening to a student-focused episode of the Sociology Show podcast. If you're studying the subject at GCSE, A-level, foundation, degree, or any other discipline, then this podcast could be of help to you. If you have a question for the show, then you can email the Sociology Show podcast at gmail.com and one of the teachers, lecturers, examiners, or experts will answer your question for you. You can sponsor the show on the GoFundMe page and subscribe on all the usual podcast platforms. If you're going to class, going to the gym, or just chilling, put your headphones in and let's be sociology geeks together, eh? Hello and welcome to a student-focused episode of the Sociology Show podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Collins, high-quality student books, teacher guides and unbeatable value revision for GCSE and A-level sociology. And so Sociology Show listeners can get 25% off Collins Sociology resources until the end of December 2021, including the new book, How to Be a Sociologist, an inspiring introduction to studying sociology at A-level and university. Simply head to collins.co.uk forward slash sociology show and enter the code sociology show at the checkout. Terms and conditions apply. I'll give you that again. It's collins.co.uk forward slash sociology show. And if you enter the code sociology show at the checkout, then you are entitled to 25% off Collins Sociology Resources. The Sociology Show podcast is also brought to you in association with Tutor to You Sociology, the exam performance specialist for A level and GCSE sociology students and teachers. And so you can visit their website, which is tutortoyou.net forward slash sociology for revision guides, flashcards, revision videos, and everything else that you need for your A-level or GCSE sociology studies. Hi, and welcome to the Takeover podcast for the Sociology Show. My name is Sonny Gunnessy, and I'm the host and creator of JCOS Presents Sound Sociology, which you can find on Spotify and anchor.fm. In today's takeover episode, I want to talk to you about a unit of work that most year 11s and 13s have probably just started, and that's sociology of crime. As sociology teachers, we have to be honest with ourselves. We probably know most of the students in our classroom have chosen the subject because of that unit of work on crime. So that's why today's episode is dedicated to gender and crime. And in particular, with an emphasis on the debatable point around rates of female criminality. This debatable point is often underpinned by a binary position. Women are either committing more crime than ever, or they are just less likely to commit crime because of how they've been socialised. I'm going to review some recent articles over the last 12 months from gov.uk and from some broadsheet newspapers and try and explain how do these modern takes fit into this age-old debate around whether women commit crime or not. After reviewing an article from gov.uk, it will come as no surprise that 95% of men make up the prison population and 5% make up the female. I say this statistic is not alarming or interesting as that's been the pattern for the last 10 plus years. What is fascinating in that article are some of its findings on the impact and consequences of being in the criminal justice system as either a man or a woman. I'm going to present to you five facts from that article and you can pause it and have a think and jot down your thoughts about how do these facts fit into the debate about whether women are committing more crime. Number one, more females entering prisons are likely to be first time offenders now. Number two, there is more representation of women in significant positions within the criminal justice system, such as courts, as judges and magistrates, than than ever. In fact, it has increased to 34% now as females in those positions. Number three, over 61% of women who are first-time offenders were on free school meals at secondary school. Number four, women have a higher average rate of re-offending than men for the first time. Number five, the most common offence for women who are convicted of their crimes are not paying their TV licence or theft from a shop. 
So how do those five facts fit into this debatable point of whether female criminality is occurring? Well, I want to juxtapose it to an article that came out in January 2020, and that was from Renee Chen, who was writing for The Guardian. Her article was called Pink Colour Crime. And she notes that there is a steady increase in the Western world of women being convicted for violent crimes. And along with that, the female prison population has more than doubled in size since the turn of the century. Well, surely when we put all of that together, it's arguing that actually, yeah, female criminality is most definitely on the increase. But I think we need to delve a little bit deeper and so, sort of start to ask yourself, well, why is that happening? Chen argues that there is a pressure on women to be the breadwinner. The changing role of women has meant they have now had to confront the pressures of being the main financial breadwinner in a home. And that brings with it strain and costs and pressure. She also argues that women are just as capable as men of being deviant and breaking the law. Now, I often think at this point, there are some pretty weak arguments out there which come from a psychology, biology type explanations. If we think back to those thinkers like Lambroso, Freud, uh, Eisnick, they would argue that women just wanted to reject the typical fem uh, femininity characteristics and they were uh, jealous of male type traits. I don't think it's as simple as that. Sociologically speaking, Chen is really grabbing onto some key ideas here, that women have taken on the breadwinner role. But also, she goes on to talk about how women are much more likely to be given a heavier sentence for drug offences. I can't help but think here that are women actually committing more crime? Or are they still facing the problem of double deviance? the case where women are not only breaking the law, but also breaking the stereotypes around how a woman should behave, and as a consequence, are punished even harsher. Does our criminal justice system still reflect a full justice inequality, or is it still based on some form of mild prejudice? Now, if we went back to gov.uk, that second fact I pulled out about there is more positive representation of women in significant positions such as judges and lawyers and magistrates and solicitors, surely that would suggest that the courts is being more equal. But this argument of double deviance and heavier sentencing for females might still have a point. Now, everything that Rene Chen talks about is nothing new to an extent. It was put forward by the sociologist Adler many, many years before her. But where do we stand when it comes to the counter-argument? I've presented to you lots of reasons why women may commit more crime, and we try to put a 21st century lens on it through Chen's article. But if we go back to some of our older arguments as a, a way of critiquing things like chivalry thesis or the work of control theory, does that help to give us a much more balanced understanding? Well, chivalry thesis is the argument that women are treated more leniently in the criminal justice system. They're much more likely to get away with crime or to have a less severe consequence. Heidenson, who works alongside the control theory explanation, goes even further and says that women are less likely to commit crime because of the importance of social bonds they have with people and relationships. This is kind of similar to the work of Hershey, who talks about the vital uh, tenets of commitment, attachment, belief and involvement. These four factors allow women to be less likely to commit crime because they see their roles as much more significant in the raising of a healthy child who is socially fitting in. Heidenson goes even further than this to suggest that women are less likely to commit crime because in fact they are controlled in certain places. Heidenson argues that women are controlled in the home through the role of marriage and motherhood the ideas of looking after the children and a well-looked-after home keeps them 
within the four walls of their house. They are controlled in the public. They are much more less likely to go out and about of an evening. And as a consequence, they are not at risk of street violence. And even further than that, the threat of sexual violence at night may keep women at home. She goes on to say that there's even control in the workplace, that women are under the duress of sexual harassment and the threat of mistreatment. Now, all of these arguments are definitely sound, but we must remember Heidenson was writing in the 80s and her arguments may not have as much precedence in today's world. Surely we can pick holes in her ideas of control in the home, control in the public and control in the work. Control in the home, we start to see now more women becoming the breadwinner. So surely there is a hole there and that can be critiqued. Control in the public, surely we can see a critique there in the emancipation and independence of women to do what they want with their lifestyles. Control in the work, Surely we have seen a challenge here through things like the Me Too movement and changes in the law. So can we really put a lot of emphasis on Heidenson to explain why women commit less crime? Or is Heidenson's work now out of date with a 21st century lens applied to it? At this point, it's not my place to give you an answer, but it's your place to be thinking about how do you weigh whether an argument that is as dated as Heidenson or Carlin or Chivalry thesis still has relevance in today's world. And part of that is your ability to engage with recent articles of the last 12 months, whether that be statistics or things that you read in the newspaper or listen to on podcasts. When you're writing those paragraphs, it's helpful in a way to be able to be more evaluative and allow you to make a clear judgment in the conclusion. I hope that you've enjoyed today's Takeover podcast. If you are interested in finding out more about what I do, please check out my podcast, JCOS Presents Sound Sociology on Spotify or Anchor.fm. Equally, I have an Instagram page, which is sound underscore sociology. And you can also find me on Twitter on the handle at sound sociology. For now, I'll thank you for listening to me on this takeover podcast for the sociology show and keep enjoying sociology. The sociology show podcast relies on the kind contributions of sponsorship and donations. If you enjoy the show, then you can help with the hosting costs by donating as little as five pounds on the GoFundMe page. Simply visit uk.gofundme.com and search for the sociology show. If you can donate, then you will be sent a Sociology Show pen as a small thank you for your continued support of the show.